good afternoon students hope you are all doing good so let's start today's class okay i hope you have gone through previous lectures before going into next class uh, just quickly recap our uh, previous class okay what we learned in the previous class was remember anyone if you remember try to enter in the chat yeah we discussed what we discussed we discovered about born haber cycle right so before discussing born haber cycle let me write born haber cycle first no before going directly into born haber cycle we discussed about uh, enthalpy of atomization enthalpy of sublimation uh, and uh, ionization energy electron gain enthalpy we need all these energies too so that we can indirectly find out lattice enthalpy right so that is what we do we do we take a complex reaction and we divide into step wise and we sum up all those enthalpies to give the complex reaction enthalpy right that's what we do so yesterday what we discussed we discussed about nacl solid converting into na plus ion into gaseous form plus cl minus ion into gaseous form now whenever we are converting this solid nacl 3d crystal into single atoms that to ions forms gaseous ion forms now this energy what we call as we call it as lattice enthalpy lattice enthalpy right now to do all these things what we did initially we cannot directly cannot uh, calculate this energy directly to convert from solid into gaseous ions so what we did we converted them into individual steps how did we do that first thing what we did we converted nacl like uh, instead of writing the formation of nacl from n and cl we are decomposing nacl 3d crystal into single atoms there is nothing but na standard form as solid and chlorine gas half mole of chlorine gas this is what we do okay now after getting the standard forms of the atoms what we do this is nothing but let's say uh, enthalpy of decomposition let's say okay now after come uh, doing this we'll be converting the single atoms into gaseous forms first as cl2 is there we need to break the cl cl bond so what we did we converted cl2 half cl2 into one cl atom so what we are doing we are doing bond dissociation energy here or atomization energy anything is fine okay we are making a single atom out of a molecule no after doing that we converted sodium uh, solid into sodium gas now directly as we are converting solid into gas this energy is called enthalpy of sublimation from solid to gas directly right sublimation enthalpy no after converting each atom sorry uh, after doing the atomization what we did we gave an electron to chlorine or we are adding an extra electron to chlorine which gave rise to cl minus ion now what is this energy when we are adding an electron to a neutral atom neutral gaseous atom this is nothing but electron gain enthalpy right now another thing what we did we removed an electron from sodium gaseous atom sorry uh, uh, sorry for this diagram but i hope you understand i change the color right uh, from sodium gaseous atom when we are removing one electron it is giving rise to na plus ion the, what is this energy when we are removing one electron that is nothing but ionization energy if we sum up all these energies we'll be getting lattice energy right now what is lattice energy equal to lattice energy is equal to summation of all the steps summation of all the enthalpies which we discussed till right first thing what first enthalpy of this reaction enthalpy of this reaction then add bond enthalpy or we can let's say atomization enthalpy of chlorine gas half mole of chlorine gas so that will be exactly half of the enthalpy and add electron gain enthalpy of chlorine and next add sublimation energy of sodium uh, solid state to sodium gaseous state and afterwards add enthalpy of ionization energy so if we sum up all these energies we'll get lattice energy okay so this is what we discussed in the last class are you clear with this content 
If you have any doubts in the previous class, try to mention it here so that we can clarify them. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, no one has any doubts. So I'm moving forward. Mm. So today, what we'll be discussing is spontaneity. What is spontaneity? Nothing. Let, let's say you are there and uh, you are touching a hot object suddenly, like without knowing you are touching a hot object. What is the immediate reaction? Like immediately your hand will move away from the hot object, right? Now that is nothing but spontaneous reaction. In the same way, we'll be seeing spontaneity, how the reactions will happen, whether they happen on their own, or whether the process, uh, not only reactions, whether the process occurs on their own, or should we provide some energy so that the process may occur. So this is what we'll be seeing today. That is based on spontaneity. And then we'll be seeing what are the reasons. First thing, one thing is enthalpy itself, what we discussed till now, and a new term that is entropy. These two things will be there where the spontaneity will be depending on enthalpy as well as entropy. So these things will be seen today. Okay. First thing is spontaneity itself, and uh, then we'll be seeing enthalpy versus spontaneity, then entropy and entropy versus spontaneity. Okay. If time is possible, we'll be going into further deep into Gibbs free energy. Now, first thing, spontaneous process, right? I gave you an example, right? Where if you are touching a hot object, immediately what you'll do, you'll uh, take your hand away from that hot object. This is a spontaneous reaction. No one is uh, telling you to remove the uh, hand, then only you'll be knowing that you should uh, remove the hand, that, like that. Now, what is a spontaneous process? Nothing process which does not need help of an external agency to occur, okay? Are you clear with this? And what are you seeing in this picture? Uh, can you uh, text in the chat? Enter in the chat. What are you seeing in this picture? Like if I remember what I said, you are seeing a hot object that is a red one, right? And a cold object, which is a blue one. Now let's say I'm keeping this A and B touching each other, okay? The A and B are touching each other. Then what happens? Then what happens? The heat will be flowing from the hotter one, that is A, object A to object B, which is a colder state, right? This is what it will be happening. Now, when this is happening, so can you say that uh, the coldness is uh, transferring from B to A? Yes or no? So generally, uh, as the energy is high for hotter object, the energy travels from a to B only, we'll not say from the coldness is transferring, we'll be saying that energy is transferring from the hotter object to colder object, okay? Now, uh, you have taken a, let's say, a hot water bottle and kept it in the fridge. What happens? Now, there what happens, the surrounding atmosphere will absorb the heat and the surrounding atmosphere will, around the hot water bottle become somewhat hot. Then this hot air again will undergo into a condenser and the air will be cooled, right? So here we are artificially doing the cooling of the bottle. Okay? So generally when we keep a hot object near a cool object, the heat transfer will take place from hotter object to colder object. This is a spontaneous process. There is no need of external work like condenser or something here. The heat will immediately transfer to the colder one. Okay. Now, what is the other picture you are seeing here? Have you seen it any time? You can text in the chat. Have you seen it? Yes or no? What are you seeing? Huh, you are seeing waterfall, right? So tell me, uh, will the water fall from up to down or uh, it will go from down to up? Will it fall from above to below or it will go from below to above? Right, you have seen waterfalls, right? Yeah, yeah. The water generally goes from, from the above of the waterfall from a height to lower height, right? This is a spontaneous process due to gravity, right? But uh, uh, if you see, uh, can I say that water goes from bottom to above spontaneously? No, that doesn't happen, right? That never happens. Did you see any reverse waterfall where water is going from down to above directly? No, you'll not see the water going in that way, okay? So this is not spontaneous process. If you speak, the water is going from bottom to above, okay? It is a spontaneous process when you are talking and the water is coming from up to down clear no these processes are called as spontaneous process okay spontaneous reactions cannot be reversed with the without the help of 
external agency if you want to uh, heat the cold object again or let's say you are keeping a hot object in a fridge what are you doing that is a work done process where you are using the condenser so that the heat is absorbed from the surrounding atmosphere of the bottle that that is a work done process now in this case in the first example where we are keeping hot object and cold ob cold object side by side here the heat transfer is spontaneous here we are not doing any kind of uh, external work okay now in the same case in case of waterfall also it is undergoing spontaneously we are not doing any external work okay let's say you are using a boring well right you know the submersion pump right where we use that pumps to pull the underground water above the surface so there we are using an external agent to bring the water from bottom of the earth to on the onto the surface of the earth. that is work done opposite right we'll be using an external force so that we can bring the water in the opposite way now let's see enthalpy versus spontaneity uh, are you clear with spontaneity spontaneity is nothing but which can occur on its own plus are you clear with spontaneity okay if you are clear let's move to enthalpy versus spontaneity then now every system tries to reduce its energy in order to gain stability yes or no yes right whenever there is a high enthalpy state that means it will lose its energy so that it will come to lower energy state and the system becomes stable generally that is what we see now can we say all the exothermic reactions are spontaneous or all the endothermic reactions are non spontaneous now let's see that let's see whether we can say that terms or not first thing is if the energy of the system is high that means stability of the system is less if the energy of the system is less the stability of the system is high now whenever you take a hot object and a cold object what happens the hot object of energy is very high and it is unstable so that what happens the energy is lost and the energy of the hot object is decreased slowly so it obtains a stable state okay it will be in equilibrium with its surrounding atmosphere so it will lose energy continuously so that it will attain the stability so generally what we say based on this experiment that as the energy of the system is high it attains less stability as energy of the system is low it attains more stability nothing but stability is inversely proportional to energy of that particular system now if you understood this properly now can uh, answer this question every system tries to reduce energy to gain stability right that is based on enthalpy we have said so every exothermic reaction should be spontaneous and endothermic should be non spontaneous can you say that class can you uh, say this that uh, every exothermic reaction is spontaneous and every endothermic reaction is non spontaneous can you say this is this sentence true now how many of you added a salt to water uh try to answer in the chat how many of you added salt to water now experimentality is seen that uh, adding salt to water is a endothermic process but uh, do you require any external force so that uh, the salt will dissolve in water no right it automatically dissolves whenever you add salt to water right yes or no did you observe yeah i hope i mean of you observed that but the only thing here is whatever the energy required for this endothermic reaction to happen is very less and that is available in the surrounding temperature itself like at room temperature itself uh, this much energy is available easily so what happens the salt whenever we add to water the energy is absorbed extra energy needed is absorbed from the surrounding temperature itself so that the reaction happens spontaneously so we cannot exactly say all the exothermic reactions are spontaneous and all the endothermic reactions are non spontaneous sometimes uh, endothermic reactions are also spontaneous whenever the energy gap is less or due to entropy which we'll be seeing in the next coming slides no the answer is no right no this is one more example you can see here where melting of ice no whenever we are uh, taking ice and uh, it is a uh, undergoing melting process what happens this is a endothermic reaction again where we are disturbing the 3d crystal right it is a 3d crystal we are disturbing the 3d lattice here 3d lattice of water molecules so generally it should be an endothermic reaction and it is endothermic reaction but still it goes into 
a spontaneous process. The only reason is due to entropy. So we'll be seeing what is this entropy term and uh, what is a major driving force here. Okay, you observe, right? Like the only answer you need to know here is whether all spontaneous processes are exothermic or endothermic. It may be any case. Now that is the main thing you need to understand in this particular one. Did you get that? If you have any doubts, try to answer in the chat or ask in the chat. Okay, uh, if you have no doubts, just uh, note on these few points. This process is endothermic, still the reaction is spontaneous. So enthalpy change alone is not the criteria. Okay, the criteria is mainly here due to spontaneity. That is the spontaneity is due to entropy. Okay. Now, this was the major drawback of first law of thermodynamics where energy cannot be created nor destroyed and energy is transformed from one form to another form. So, it didn't explain about uh, these driving forces, why the reaction is spontaneous or why the reaction is not spontaneous. Okay. Generally, entropy is majorly about uh, the second law of thermodynamics itself. And uh, these are the minimum points you need to know. And some of the exceptions are where you need to see here. Okay. Now, all exothermic reactions are spontaneous and all endothermic reactions are non-spontaneous. That is general case, if you see, but not always, not always. Okay, not always. Now, what are the exceptions here? Is that one, one of the thing is melting of rice, uh, ice, we have seen till now. And one more endothermic, uh, dissolution that is so salt in water that is also an example of a, like exception of a spontaneous process where it is endothermic process but still the reaction is spontaneous due to entropy only vaporization of water is also a, a endothermic reaction but still it is spontaneous which occurs in nature whatever reactions occur naturally which are without the involvement of any organism or, or human being let's say or any machine uh, which occurs in nature normally those all are taken as spontaneous process and uh, if you drop a ink drop in water they automatically disperse all over the water right all the water will become blue color slowly now this is also a exception for a exothermic or endothermic process where it doesn't evolve any heat nor it needed any energy so enthalpy will be zero there and still the reaction happens spontaneously mixing of two gases you are taking two different gases and you are tipping in. Let's say you are taking two uh, gases and connecting it with the tube. And gas A and gas B, if you open this cork, both will mix up spontaneously. There is no need of any work there, right? This is also an example here. Just you can understand these examples, okay? Endothermic solution of salt, NaCl, okay? This is one of the main major example you need to remember, okay? Now, it is observed that nature tries to distribute energy and uh, matter uniformly and it will randomize things. You know, turn order, right? It will randomize everything, all the homes and everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, it is not good, but just one example of nature where it will randomize many things. Now, what is the spontaneity depending on mainly? And now, it depends. First thing is, Decrease in energy is not the only criteria of our spontaneity. You will learn that. First thing what we learned before the second law of thermodynamics or, or about entropy, before knowing about entropy, where all the higher energy systems will attain a lower energy system spontaneously. That's what we have seen. But that's not the only driving force we'll all be seeing. You will also be seeing a new driving force. There are two criteria which decide direction of spontaneity. One is energy, nothing but which is represented by enthalpy. nothing but represented by enthalpy so generally we'll be seeing a uh, higher enthalpy to lower enthalpy the reactions will be or decrease in energy will be undergoing in any particular system or reactions and the another driving force is entropy entropy is nothing but uh, what let's say if uh, enthalpy is energy and uh, entropy shows how this energy is distributed that's what entropy is okay both delta h and delta s should be considered simultaneously so mean mutual effect of delta h comparison and delta s comparison will be saying whether the reaction will be spontaneous or non-spontaneous in case of salt the enthalpy is less right already the enthalpy is less so the 
it shouldn't decrease much more it shouldn't be spontaneous but here the driving force is entropy where the molecules were in solid state when salt is in solid state and when we dissolve it in water it is dissolving into aqueous ions which is more random when compared to the solid state so energy tries to be in randomized form rather in a particular state okay so these are some of the driving forces for spontaneous reactions one is enthalpy so general, generally enthalpy tries to go to lower state and entropy which tries to go to higher state increase in entropy and decrease in energy these are the two driving forces which you need to keep in mind to consider spontaneity now what is entropy entropy is not but randomness of a particular system now if you write it in a particular sentence the measure of degree of disorderness or randomness in a system is nothing but entropy now if you see here now how, what are you seeing here like uh, let's say these blue dots are you are standing in a assembly line so three lines are there so three rows you are standing in a assembly so first thing what you observe there is a orderliness in your particular rows right you are exactly behind each other no it has less entropy the distribution of energy is less and whenever you are slightly disturbed like immediately after immediately completion of the assembly you will slightly disperse right so at this particular time what happens due to this somewhat randomness the energy dispersion is increased the enthalpy will be staying same but uh, the how they are dispersed are different if you are directly going to different classes again each one goes to their cl own classes right so here again distribution is very much high now less ordered means it is more entropy and more order means it is less entropy the opposite cases so whenever you see a very much disorderness that means it has high entropy whenever you are seeing more orderness or more regularness that means it has less entropy do you have any doubts in entropy did you understand the term entropy if you have any doubts try to text in the chat okay uh, if you don't have any doubts let's move no entropy is a state function what does that mean nothing but you will be seeing initial and final states only but it doesn't depend on which path you are choosing whether the process is in two steps or single step that doesn't matter here the only thing is what is the initial state of the system and what is the final state of the system only that is particularly concerned and it uh, if you see as the solids have more orderness 3d crystal form so there is more orderness that means least entropy and the liquid if you compare between solid and liquid liquid is less ordered when compared to solid so liquid have more entropy than solid and when you go to gas they are random right they're here and there everywhere you cannot say where the actual gas molecule is if you let's say initial gas molecule is here now can you say after 10 minutes all the gas molecule is here it will go somewhere we don't you don't know whatever uh, like at which point the gas molecule is there in the air but uh, in case of liquid you can say that if you take this beaker the gas water molecule is present in but that particular beaker itself beaker itself so here what happens as we go from solid to liquid the randomness increases that means entropy increases and from liquid to gas as the randomness increases very drastically the entropy also will increase very much here now it is a extensive property what does extensive property mean nothing but it depends on how much amount of matter you are taking okay if you are taking one mole of gas or if you are taking two moles of gas okay let's say in a container there is one mole of gas and next thing you are taking is in a container there are two moles of gas so here as the amount of matter is increasing the entropy also increases the only reason why is in case of one mole of gas the collisions are different the energy of the system is different and whenever you are taking two moles of gas in the same container again the collision is different that means energy of the system is different the randomness of energy is different when you are changing amount of matter in the system if you are in a class let's say you are there 15 people 15 students are there in the class and if you say only five students are there so how the energy is distributed initially among 15 students and afterwards how the energy is distributed among five students so this is the difference because uh, and entropy also depends on how much amount of matter you are considering okay now 
Uh, if we see, we cannot uh, find entropy in a single state. So what we do, we'll take initial and final points. So in the same way, products is nothing but our final point and initial point is nothing but our reactants. So the change in entropy is nothing but summation of change in entropy of the products minus summation of change in entropy of the reactants. This symbol, what does that represent? It represents the standard conditions. What are the standard conditions? Class try to enter in the chat what are the standard conditions when you are finding your standard entropy yeah 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 the temperature nothing but 298 kelvin and what is the pressure nothing but one bar what is the number of moles you'll be considering one mole will be considering at standard conditions to find out enthalpy entropy these things okay don't forget the standard conditions questions they'll be giving directly and they'll not be mentioning the standard conditions so you need to remember these now try to go through the question and uh, have two minutes take your time and just try to see whether they have increasing entropy or decreasing entropy first answer the first question first answer the first one A liquid crystallizes into solid. Now, whether the entropy is increasing or decreasing? Simple questions. Try to answer in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are right. Nothing but whenever a liquid is undergoing a crystallization into solid, what happens? From randomness to orderedness, it is going, right? So what is happening? Entropy will decrease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. Entropy will decrease. Entropy will decrease. Now, next thing is, as temperature of the crystalline solid raised from 0 Kelvin to 115 Kelvin. What I'm doing here, I'm heating the particular crystal. Now, when I'm heating, what happens? Entropy will again increase, right? The same thing we'll be seeing. So here also entropy will increase. In the first case, entropy will decrease when we are converting liquid to solid. And in the second case, as the temperature increasing, entropy is also increased for the solid crystal. Now, in the third case, what are you seeing? No. In the third case, what are you seeing? Whenever we are taking sodium bicarbonate, it is converted into sodium carbonate plus carbon dioxide gas and water. This is what given. Where a solid is converting into a solid product plus two gaseous products. What is happening? Is the entropy increasing? Initially, we took two moles of a solid and finally we are getting one mole of solid and two moles of gaseous molecules. What does that mean? The entropy is increasing again. Are you clear with that? Yeah, the entropy increases. Genevieve Kasser wrote, good. The entropy increases. Now, whenever we are taking a hydrogen molecule and converting to hydrogen atom, we are atomizing the hydrogen molecule into hydrogen atoms. So what is happening? One mole of hydrogen gas is converted into two moles of hydrogen atoms. Now, what happens to entropy again? One mole of gas is converted into two moles of gas. Yeah, you are right. Now, what is happening here? As the entropy increases again, one from one mole of gas to two moles of gas. In atomization also, the same thing happens. Now, product has more gases, molecules or atoms, so increase in entropy. Try to note down the answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good response, good response. Try to note down the answers. We'll move to the next slide. If you have any doubts in the previous questions, you can uh, ask in the chat. Okay. Uh, if you don't have, we'll move. Okay. No. First thing, entropy depends on what we learned initially. First thing is, what is the heat content or energy of the particular system? And then, as we are increasing the temperature also, the entropy is increasing, right? Why? Because the as the energy of the molecule increases, let's say first thing, vibrations increase, right? And as well as because that, uh, the disorderness increases, right? 
So entropy is depending on what is the energy of the system as well as what is the temperature of the system. These two things we need to keep in mind. Now, by seeing this, uh, we have derived an equation that is uh, delta S change in entropy is nothing but heat of a system if you are taking a reversible process q re rev reversible process by temperature heat at a constant temperature and pressure will be seen now we'll see this in uh, more briefly in the coming slides now first thing is uh, when we discussed the enthalpy of the universe also nothing but uh, we need to combine enthalpy of the system plus enthalpy of the surroundings or if we talk about entropy of the system the same thing again we will do the enthalpy of entropy of the system plus entropy of the surroundings okay now when you are heating water what happens or you are boiling water what happens now liquid water molecules will be converted into water vapor right now what is happening the entropy of the system is increasing okay where the water vapor is evolved okay so in that way what happens whenever a system let's say heat let's talk about heat now you put a uh, hot water bottle in a cold weather what happens the heat will transfer from inside the bottle to outside the bottle right what is happening the heat is transferring from the bottle to the outside surroundings so as this heat is surrounding uh, it is released now the bottle is losing the heat and the surrounding is obtaining the heat now, if you combine all this heat again, it will be equal to heat content in the universe itself. The same way, entropy also entropy of a universe is nothing but entropy of the system plus entropy of the surroundings. Are you clear with this? Now, let's see that with an example how we are going to see entropy and spontaneity. Second law of thermodynamics, nothing but it speaks about entropy it generally says that entropy of any particular universe if you see it goes on increasing it does not decrease now initially what we did we have taken liquid water and we heated it initial the entropy of liquid water is less and this water is converted into gas that means the entropy increased if you see if you combine the entropy of the system and entropy of the surroundings what happens on a whole in the sum the entropy is increasing right so what we did we created an entropy and we are increasing it so generally spontaneously what happens if you keep the hot, uh, cold water in hot uh, in sun in summer let's say you are keeping this water in sun automatically this process will happen right automatically evaporation takes place due to heat from the sun so this is a spontaneous process we consider it like that so what happens generally whenever this spontaneous process are taking the entropy of the universe will go on increase and will be creating new entropy again and again but during the spontaneous process will not take that uh, the entropy will decrease okay now see this example we are taking gas a with red molecules and gas b with green molecules now next thing we are doing we are doing we are mi mixing these both of the gases so as the number of molecules of gases increases the entropy of the system is also increasing okay mixture of a and b has more randomness so the energy distribution is more that means the entropy is more when compared with individual gas a and gas b okay this is nothing but second law of thermodynamics where the entropy of the universe will be going on increasing and it will not decrease do you have any doubts in this okay uh, if you don't have any doubts i'll be moving to you next slide so entropy of the universe will be always increasing and delta s in the representation it is delta s universe is always greater than zero that is positive delta s is always positive now entropy for different process one thing you need to remember is according to uh, first law of thermodynamics what we learned energy cannot be created nor destroyed what we do we convert one form of energy into another form but in case of entropy is different where entropy can be created but cannot be destroyed okay that you need to keep in mind though both are different terms enthalpy or energy or entropy not same no as surrounding is an infinite heat reservoir if you say whatever you are surrounded it has a very high amount of heat let's say you are burning a tire after burning some time uh, let's say after completely burnt and you left it for one hour or two hours no automatically it will come into equilibrium it will attain normal temperature what is the surroundings have right so what we generally consider is that the surrounding is a infinite heat reservoir 
and no amount of heat given to surroundings can make any big difference can make any cause any turbulence in it okay i'm uh, reading the sentence once uh, try to understand it as surrounding is an infinite heat reservoir hence no amount of heat can be given to surroundings and it cannot cause any turbulence in it any disturbance in it okay hence all heat exchanges with surroundings are considered to be reversible processes are you clear with this sentence as the surroundings have a lot of temperature the simple uh, sentence is so what happens here is as whenever the system is giving the heat to the surroundings no at last whatever heat is given it will attain equilibrium and it will become at normal temperature only so this is what he is saying and all the process where the system is giving heat towards the surroundings will attain equilibrium at last no that is given by delta s surrounding is equal to integration of d q by t okay we calculate entropy at constant temperature and pressure only now for surrounding e is constant right why because why is t constant because uh, like i said right surroundings is considered as heat reservoir and it will generally attain equilibrium again at last if you write it in this way nothing but q surrounding by delta s surrounding is equal to heat of the surrounding by t by the law of conservation of energy whatever heat is given out by the system that is lost by the system will be equal to heat of the surroundings whatever gained by the surroundings now if you write uh, delta s universe what happens now let's see if we take uh, these in two cases one is reversible case and one is irreversible case now you are going from a to b okay in a irreversible process the entropy change is there delta s universe in irreversible process is there and you are getting a reversible process now let's say we are talking about delta s system now if you are talking delta s system where a is in initial position b is in final position whether you go in reversible process from a to b or irreversible process from a to b both will give the same change of entropy of the system both will give same because it is a state function it does not depend on which path you are choosing whether it is a reversible path or irreversible okay now if you go on uh, derive this equation where delta s surrounding is nothing but heat of the surrounding by at constant temperature t now whenever there is an equilibrium process in a reversible process right there is a equilibrium between system and surroundings so where q system is equal to q surroundings heat lost by a system is equal to heat gained by surroundings or heat lost by the surroundings is equal to heat gained by the system these things we can we can write it in both ways both are same if that's the case whenever you write delta s universe what it is it equal to in a reversible process what we can say delta s universe is nothing but zero okay delta s universe is taken as zero in a reversible process only now whenever go to irreversible process uh, can you write uh, so as there is no equilibrium if the system is losing the heat it will directly go into surroundings and that heat which is absorbed by surroundings will not come back to the system again so here the reverse process is not possible right so once the entropy change is done it cannot be decreased here so what we'll be doing delta s surrounding is equal to q surrounding by t where q system is not uh, entropy of the system is not equal change in entropy of the system is not equal to change in entropy of the surroundings so since irreversible processes are spontaneous in nature so as we see here the delta s universe will be generally greater than zero that is the entropy of the universe will be positive okay no are you clear with this concept where in reversible process as there is equilibrium between the initial and final entropies so as they are reversible from one or from system to surroundings or surrounding to system so as a whole the change in enthalpy of the universe will be remaining constant now when we come to irreversible process there is only one way process where it is uh, products to reactants only and the reactants are not converting to products so because this only as one molecule is converted into two molecules the entropy goes on increases but doesn't decrease are you clear you have any doubts you can uh, text in the chat
okay uh, if you don't have in doubts try to see this diagram and figure out what is happening here so the initial case is where the valve is closed okay where the valve is closed now the final case is what so initially what you observe all the boom, blue molecules are on the left side and all the red molecules are on the right side right all the blue are on the left side and all the red molecules are on the right side but after opening the valve what happened just we are opening the valve we are doing nothing immediately as we open the valve the gas molecules will mix into each other we don't say that we don't do any work so that we can pump the blue molecules into red and red the molecules into blue into blue it happens spontaneously we, uh, there is no need of uh, doing any external work here okay so generally what we say all spontaneous process or naturally occurring processes are thermodynamically irreversible now whatever this gas mixture mixed up can you say that it will uh, certainly attain an equilibrium where the blue molecule will be all in the left side and red molecules will all be in the right side no right uh, that sorry for that no if you continue uh, as this is not a rever reversible process and if you see in nature the gases mix but uh, the gases don't separate that easily until we do an external work naturally now without the help of an external agency a spontaneous process cannot be reversed that is what we are talking here did you understand this particular uh, terms okay uh, if you are clear with that then try to answer this question take your notes and try to note down what is given first and do the problem what is given calculate the entropy change of vaporization of liquid to steam at 100 degree centigrade given the heat of vaporization is 40.8 kilojoules per mole it is given temperature is given how much 100 degree centigrade so whenever temperature is given in degree centigrade or degree fahrenheit try to take it in kelvin scale okay don't forget that now in kelvin nothing but 100 degree centigrade plus 273 if you want accurately 273.15 but uh, generally for calculation sake we'll be taking 273 okay 273 so if you convert that 373 kelvin our temperature in kelvin scale will be 373 now given heat of vaporization is given nothing but the q heat is given how much 40.8 kilojoules right kilojoules not joules kilojoules per now you know the formula right to calculate entropy what is the formula delta s is equal to q by heat by if you do that 40.8 into 10 power 3 joule per mole divided by temperature that is 373 kelvin okay so the answer in for entropy units it will be joule per mole per kelvin okay if you do the calculations, try to note on the answer. Heat at constant temperature and pressure is taken as enthalpy itself. Okay. So answer will be 109.38 joule per mole per Kelvin. Okay. Do you have any doubts in the question? Okay, if you don't have any doubts, let's move then. No, uh, tomorrow we'll be seeing uh, more deeply about Gibbs free energy. Okay, so try to think what is Gibbs free energy. So until now we have discussed enthalpy, entropy, right? So in Gibbs free energy, what we'll do is we'll try to relate enthalpy and entropy and say, so in comparison only we'll be saying, in comparison between enthalpy and entropy, we'll be saying whether the reaction is spontaneous or not right so here gibbs free energy is used so that we can relate enthalpy and entropy together clear we turn we learn the term enthalpy we learn the term entropy so we use these two terms and we'll be using gibbs free energy so that we can relate entropy and enthalpy 
as well as temperature of the system so that we can say whether the reaction occurring spontaneously or not whether the reaction occurs spontaneously at which temperature that too or whether the reaction is occurring non spontaneously that to at which temperature we'll be seeing in those cases the only thing is gibbs free just shows you the spontaneousness of the reaction whether it actually occurs naturally or not so if you have any doubts in the class you can ask now or you can leave and uh, try to answer the poll and if you have doubts try to ask in the chat <laughs> 